So today we're going to be putting together the Fitz Cycles Ultimate All Road Steel um, Gravel Adventure Racing Randoneering Bike. That's a lot of stuff. It just, that's, that, that bike's going to be able to do a lot of things. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so today we're going to be picking up the final set of parts to build up the Fit Cycles Ultimate All Road uh, Randoneering Bike. So I am here in the van and we are heading over to All Rounder Bicycle Shop, which is located in Emeryville, California. Uh, Omar ordered all the final parts and he has also offered to let me assemble the bike in his shop. It's Sunday, the shop is actually closed today, but um, the space is available and the parts are there, so that's where we're going. I've got my steel bike with me on the back of the van. One of the things I need to do is swap the headset off the steel bike onto the new Fitz bike. The headset is a Chris King threaded headset, and uh, in the interest of time, I wanted to get the Fitz cycles built up, and I'll have to replace the headset on the touring bike at a later time. So that's one of the tasks I need to do first. But before we even get that far, you ready to go get some coffee? Yes. You said the magic word. All right. Mm -hmm. well, let's go. All right. So our first stop for uh, before we get going on this bike yeah, is got to go over here to the donut shop and get a couple donuts. See, Omar wants a donut. Um, something tells me that he does. Okay. Let's grab a couple extras. I was uh, originally planning for. Good. They had to put them in a cardboard box. Oh, I, yeah, wow. I mean, it's always good to come out of a donut shop with more than you expected. <laughs> So let's get this uh, show on the road, huh? You ready? I'm ready. Donuts? Yeah, do you want to carry the yeah. donuts? Yes. All right, we're here. Omar shop in Emeryville. Let's go see what he's doing. See if he's ready for this Sunday. See if he's ready to let us tear his shop up, get this bike put together. You got the donuts? I got the donuts. Hey, guys. Compliments of Mr. Ooh. Omar, hey. how are you? Good to see you. You too. Get some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold the camera. Here. No, here. I'll have trees. We brought you some donuts. Oh wow. Wow. Oh my God. Thanks, Trace. <laughs> well, there's Jeremy, but you're welcome. Come on in. Oh wait, you guys need to bring. Some. Yeah, we gotta bring some stuff in. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Here, I'll just turn it off. Okay. <sighs> Grab the bike here first. Okay, Omar gets, let's see his first reaction. Let's get Omar's first reaction. Oh my god, this thing is insane. Wait, can I look at the light here? Yeah. Oh my god, this thing looks way better in person. What do you think? Yeah, this paint came out really good. Didn't it? Or powder. Yeah, this is powder coat. Okay, I'm gonna grab the fork. Okay. Do you want help? No, I got it. Alright, 
fork and rack. Hi. Is it light enough? Um, it's got a rack on it too. So that's pretty good. That, that's like the weight of a normal heavy fork. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was just lifting a couple of forks in the back today and I was like, it was like actually a carbon fork that was like an adventure fork, but it was kind of heavy. I was like, damn. Yeah. This disc thing break? feels close to the same weight. And it has a rack it's on it. It's a disc fork, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we can... I'm gonna defer to you on this okay. one. All right, so here are all the parts ready to go. We're gonna be putting these together here in Omar's shop. So let me just take you through really quickly what we have for this build. So the first part uh, I'll talk about is the crank. It's a triple, and is this 10 speed compatible? Yeah, 10 and 11. Okay, cool. And it has a 48, 36, 26 with the middle ring. The other parts are probably pretty straightforward. I think I'll talk about this derailleur, the rear derailleur. Uh, we were, you were kind of running me through some of the challenges with the triple, mm -hmm. finding a triple compatible rear derailleur that is also compatible with ten, nine and 10 speed. Is that right? Yeah. Well, 10 speed Shimano, because you were planning to run friction down to, yep. but with the possibility of running um, dual control lever and in my mind that would be 10 speed Shimano. <laughs> Are um, we being a little optimistic? Or? No, I think it will work great. The, the, the trick is um, you, you could run an 11 speed system mm -hmm. but since you're doing down tube shifters you uh, you might run out of room in your shifter to shift across the 11. Okay. And uh, so I thought better to run 10 and then which leaves you with what are the good um, dual control shifter options in 10. And I think Shimano makes really good ones, especially when you run it with this derailleur. It's a nine speed derailleur, but it works really good with 10 speed um, Shimano levers. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, let's go through the rest of these parts real quick. I have the, as I've already shown in a video before, we have the Mayfac center pull brakes, but uh, we'll be replacing the pads with these new uh, cool stop four dot pads. Uh, I picked up a Nitto, what model is this? NP or Pearl. The Pearl. It used to be called the Pearl, but now it just says Nitto on there. Yeah, it looks really, really, really nice in person. So this is the Nitto Pearl stem. It's a, it's a 100 millimeter. And I got this one because it has this center bolt and Grand Bois makes a nice uh, deck of lure that goes into this center bolt mount. So I was thinking I could use it for that reason also. And then what else did I mention? Oh, the handlebars. These are the randonneuring bars, and we're going to give these a try. These are a 42 uh, centimeter wide B136 randonneuring bars. They have a 26 millimeter cr uh, clamp. But not least, sorry, Kel. Yeah, Naomi's She's having a great time. Last but not least, the saddle. This was a really tough decision to make. I've never tried one of these before, so this will be my first time using the Geo Bertude saddle, but uh, I couldn't help myself. This has the titanium rails. It is one of the lightest leather saddles on the market. And uh, having good luck with my Brooks, I wanted to give this one a try. And this one, let's open it up, I guess. The reason this one looked so interesting to me was that it has more of a kind of road bike geometry to it yeah. and a little more positions to move around and it feels pretty light uh, it's not as light as your racing saddle would be but for a wow for a leather saddle that thing is beautiful whatever that thing that is yeah it's like a brace of some sort wow it's a seriously nice looking saddle and I'm kind of excited to see how it changes color <laughs> when I when I use it yeah. I have heard they take a while to break in mm -hmm. have you tried one of these saddles? Mm -hmm. no it's got a plastic piece back here this is plastic brought some leather bar tape I was this was donated to me from Bob Cawthorn donated this oh, wow. so uh, yeah very generous of him so thanks Bob and uh, hopefully I don't know if I'll get this on today but we'll get it on eventually 
brake levers. These are just some old Shimano. Are these the 600? No, the these are Suntour. They don't have a return spring in them. Uh huh. So it's gonna have to rely on the springs in the in Maybach racers. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll be using down tube shifters. I have a set of bar end shifters here, but I think I'm just gonna use this part and just make it a down tube shifter bike. Yeah. Which ones are they? So these were from Rivendell. I bought these a couple years ago when I went over there. And uh, they're designed by Grant Peterson, but made by, I think they're made by Diacomp, but they yeah. were designed by Grant Peterson. Yeah. Brake cable, the brake hangers, front and rear. I guess that's what about these. Oh yes, I gotta talk about these. I forgot. These are important. So these are the compass uh, brake mounting bolts, but they have a, a threaded end on here, which is for the front rack. And this size is specific to the rack that John made. John Fitzgerald built the front rack. This. This diameter is uh, designed for the rack brazon. So they make these in this where the two threads are the same size, but they make this one, which is, has a little bit smaller thread. So you got to make sure you use the correct one. So this is for the center pole brake and the Fitz Cycles rack. I guess I should say something about these fenders. Um, and then, of course, the last and most important piece of every bike, in my opinion. These are all my opinions, by the way. These do not reflect the opinions of Omar's shop, so don't hold him to anything I say. <laughs> um, these are the Hanjo 650B fenders. Oh, do we have the tires? Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Maybe we'll talk about the tires real quick too. Anyway, these are the fenders. These are 62 millimeter wide. Bubble wrap. She's gonna have an endless supply of that here, working here. There you go. All right, and tires 48 millimeter parimoto tires these are made by paneracer and uh, i i don't want anybody to think that i no longer like compass tires because i still do these um these i wanted to give them a try i've had a couple people ask me to to review other tires so i thought this would be a golden opportunity to try something similar but um but close to the same so these are 27.5 by 1.9, which is equivalent to 48 millimeters. And uh, they're about the same weight. They're, their claimed weight is 500 grams. And uh, the Compass version was 480. So I would say they're probably similar to the, they're probably similar to the Compass as far as the, the standard casing. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna try these on this, for this first set of tires. We got the first tire mounted, and wow, I am amazed at how nice these tires are. 27.5 by 1.9, which is basically 48 millimeters. See? Like the clearances look good, and yeah. I, I've got my experience with custom, and I only got two custom. stem out, it was pretty rusted in there. Uh, my mistake, I don't think I put any grease on it. But uh, here's the headset, this is the Chris King. It's been in there for several years. Hasn't even, uh, was never maintained once. And it still feels, 
feels brand new. Even my, my live audience agrees. When I pull them off, they're like, see how it's kind of warped right oh, now? Oh wow. I have to kind of form it, get it flat again. Why do they do that? Do they do well, that from the weight of the bike? Most crown races don't bend. Like, so see how it pulls it off? It's basically from, oh, when it from pulls two it sides. It, it yanks it off, but it just pulls up on two sides. Uh -huh. It kind of wraps around, but not completely. Got the headset here installed with the brake hanger. I'm kind of glad you're here. I feel like you would have run into the punches. This is great. So I think he had two sons. Two guys with two sons. <laughs> Yeah, I might end up going with those brass bushings because these ones are when you snug this up, but it probably get loose over time. But it's a little I don't know, you want to you think. Oh yeah, that one's well. I think it's grease it a little more maybe. The spinner, how the spinner works. Oh wow. Are you serious? So yeah, he said I'd have to probably do a little bit there. Look at that. I think that's gonna it's work. gonna look cool though. This actually turned into, this is day two of the build. Uh, we kind of got carried away on some other things yesterday. We got stuck on pulling out the headset on the other bike, but um, we got that taken care of and now we've got this pretty much together. Uh, the brake, one of the things with the powder coating here was that on the cynical brakes, these posts have a little built up powder coating. So we've started filing that and trying to clean it up so that these will operate more smoothly. Um, so that's just a little detail we weren't, we weren't prepared for. Uh, not, nothing major, just, just part of, you know, building up a new bike. And uh, we got the bars on, we've got the Aero, these are going to be aero brake levers and for this set of handlebars as I've kind of mentioned maybe in another video I was going to do two sets of bars with a Nitto stem but have STI or brake lever shifters on another set for those fun rides where you want to go really fast and not have to shift from the down tube. Um, we got the down tube shifters on speaking of those. And one thing Omar mentioned about these is that the way they, these are, these were the Rivendell designed uh, down tube shifters. But one of the things about them is that they sit really flat against the, the frame. Uh, one of the things I like about, and one of the reasons I went with down tube shifters is because I like to be able to shift both the front and rear derailleurs with one hand. So when you're doing the crossover, when you're doing your crossover to shift, uh, with it being so flat, it can sometimes get be a little difficult to get your thumb underneath. And so there's another shifter that's made by Diacomp that sits up a few degrees higher when it's fully down. So it sits up more like that. That would be at the full. Um, that would be at the full extension there. So when you reach around, when you reach over here to grab that shifter, your thumb can come underneath a lot easier. So I may switch over to those, uh, but otherwise we're going to leave these on for now because I have them. And what else? We've got the crank set installed. This is the Sugino triple. On the rear derailleur, we've got the rear derailleur installed. And we went with the 
Shimano Dior long cage uh, mountain bike 10 speed. We're gonna put a 10 speed cassette on. I think we're gonna go with an 1134. We still have to cut this seat post. One of the things that um, I have to do because of this special rear taillight braze on is the seat post will only go down to here. So what we'll do is we're gonna get the, get the saddle height set by trimming the seat post and just having a little bit of seat post above this braze on. We're not gonna, we wanna get as much seat post into, this, into the seat tube as possible, but um, we don't want it to bump into here. So I might leave like maybe a, a half a centimeter or a full centimeter, we'll see. I don't wanna leave, I wanna get as much seat post in I want to get as much seat post in here as possible. And what else? The tires, uh, we went with tubeless. Actually, I can bring it over to this one. We went with, uh, we went with tube tires. And these, are, these were the 48s. Omar showed me a little trick on how to install these a little bit easier. Because these are tubeless ready rims so they don't have a very deep trough which makes it very difficult to put uh, tubeless tires on. Uh, but the thing is, these are tubed tires. These are actually not advertised as tubeless tires. Uh, these are the Perry Motos by Panracer. And they're very similar to the Compass, but Compass tires are actually tubeless compatible. So I'm not quite sure what the difference is, to be honest but these ones are a little bit cheaper and it could be because they're not tubeless compatible. So that's basically where we're at. I think we're gonna, we just need to put the brake cables on and the cassette and the chain and the shifter cables and the derailleurs on. And then of course we'll do the bar tape and the rack and the fenders at a, a later date. Well, it's starting to look pretty good, Omar. It's beautiful. I mean, it really is going to look nice with the fenders on it. Okay, that's a good one. Getting a good stretch. Yeah. I keep having these. We got the center pole brakes all wired up and Working really well. Front one feels really good. The rear one, because the cable's a little longer, feels like there's a little, a little bit of a hang up somewhere in here, but it could be a number of things. A little hang up on the hanger. Could be a little bit of cable dragging in this tight curve. It could be, I don't know. So we're gonna, we're gonna try it out like that and just see. Uh, we'll give give it a spin. We got the down tube shifter cables set up. Um, we just put a chain on. Now we're just adjusting the derailleurs. We still need to trim the saddle to the right height and put some pedals on it. And then I think it'll be all set for a quick spin around the block.
caps on the cables, pedals, and cut the seat post. All right. All right, well, we are at the moment where the bike is gonna come off the stand. We cut the seat post. We've got the saddle set to uh, the height that I set it for on this other, my other touring bike over here. Derailers are hooked up. We got the pedals on. Brakes are ready to go. Still need to do bar tape. We'll do that later. We have um, everything. Everything's rideable. It's, it's not complete, but it's rideable. So now, what are we gonna do next, Omar? Take pictures. We're gonna take some pictures, and oh, then we're gonna right. take it out for its maiden voyage. Oh man, I get, I'm getting nervous just, just thinking about this. This is, uh, I kind of want to savor the moment here where it, it hasn't yet been ridden, but it's ready to. Hi, Dada. Um, Can we go ride it? Yeah, we, we should tape down this right side here, but yeah, get your shoes on. And let's okay, yeah. I'll go grab my shoes out of the van and then uh, I'll be back and we'll go spin this thing around the block. Well, Omar, I gotta say, the shifting is perfect. And, you know, everything feels really good. The positions turn, I mean, for just a rough setup, it feels pretty good. Awesome. Obviously, we'll be getting some used to the saddle and getting that broken in. Uh oh. Got a, got a dog chasing the skateboard. Okay, so I just got back from a ride and I wanted to share my first impressions of the bike and give you a little rundown on some notes I made. Kind of been dialing in the fit. I've had two rides on it so far and so far really well. It's going really well. There's a couple of quick observations I'll make in that uh, with the triple front crank, this is an Albion uh, I don't know exactly, it's a new Albion, I believe is what it's called. It has a very wide Q factor, and the Q factor is basically how wide your pedals are apart from when you're in your pedal stroke, how far apart they are. This has a fairly wide Q factor, and so that is uh, one of the things I need to work out. The bottom bracket is a square taper, so that means you can get narrower ones, but there's a limit on how far, how narrow you can go before the chains, chain rings actually start bumping into things. So there's some limitations on that. So this crank set may not work for me. Um, if it doesn't work, I'm looking into possibly switching to a compact double or a subcompact double, one that has even smaller uh, bolt circle diameter to, to accommodate even smaller chain rings like a 3046, for example. So that's where I'm kind of leaning at the moment simply because I need to get that Q factor down and a compact double has a narrower Q factor. Also the chain line on this particular crank has a fairly wide chain line so it's not in usable gears when the chain starts to really start crossing over. We're, those are the gears that I would normally be riding in. There's a lot of cross chaining happening so with all those things considered I think I'm going to be switching over to a compact double even though I was really hoping to be able to stick with a uh, triple, but uh, that's still to be determined. So let's talk about the, um, real quick, I'll just talk about how it rides and the fitting. The uh, saddle is basically centered on the seat post here. This Nitto has a slight setback. Everything fits really nicely. I feel like I've got the saddle in a really good position uh, for where I like to feel on the, on the saddle and my leg relative to the bottom, or to the uh, pedal axle or the spindle. Uh, so the setback is really good, the height's really good, and I feel really good on this with the 170 millimeter crank. So as far as the reach, I had initially set the uh, bars fairly high, and I have subsequently been lowering them down to a place where I feel it is the most balanced, where I feel like there's a good amount of forward uh, lean, and not feeling like I'm sitting up too high uh, where I'm getting a decent aerodynamic position but not um, 
not so far reaching where I feel like I'm just totally stretched out. It's sort of an in-between, I would say, if I had to compare this fitting to my other bikes, that this is in between uh, my, my aggressive road bike and my ultra comfortable touring bike. It's kind of right in between. So it's a really good fit. It's a really good position. Um, this does have the 100 millimeter stem. So I went 10 millimeters longer than uh, what I showed on my original diagram. So we're going to start here, and that's where we're going to make adjustments to the bike as time goes on. But this is the starting point. Um, the bars are 42 millimeters wide, and they are narrower than my touring bike. And I have to say, I much prefer narrower bars. The down tube shifters are spectacular. This uh, design, this the way it functions, it's friction shifting, but does have a bit of a ratcheting mechanism way to go Rivendell that was these I'm so glad I got these these are like the nicest shifters I've used uh, the nicest down tube shifters I've ever used and they're very affordable which is what makes them even better um, the 650B wheel and tire combination is working out really nice uh, I like the comfort of the of the 48 millimeter tire and yet it feels incredibly fast they feel smoother they kind of do deaden the feel of the road so it's hard to tell if you're going faster or slower, um, but uh, they are smoother and the high volume means that they will roll off-road off really well. And if you're not going much slower on the road, but you have all these other options to be able to go off-road, it just seems like a win-win situation. Um, so yeah, I'm pleased with that. The low trail is very um, interesting. <laughs> I notice now, now that I have been, now that I'm riding this with the low trail and I don't have a handlebar bag or any load on the front, it feels exactly like my uh, older vintage Bianchi. And I didn't realize that that bike was low trail, but now that I've been riding this, it just it's so reminiscent of that old Bianchi. Now, Bianchi I'm talking about is the one I rode at the La Royca uh, last year. And uh, it has a really steep fork rake on it, so I thought maybe it was low trail but it was a 700 C wheel, so I wasn't really sure. But yeah, now that I've ridden this one, I can kind of say that it, it has definitely has a lower trail. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's, it's a low trail. So um, that's cool. What I found about the low trail in terms of steering was that when you make a very tight turn, what I've noticed on some, most of my bikes, when you make that really tight turn, it feels like the wheel kind of wants to go to a certain point and then you sort of stop moving and you know, you're kind of like rotating about the back. Well, that doesn't really happen on this bike. And I don't know if it's a combination of the long chain stays and the low trail, but it just keeps steering. Even the tighter you go, it still steers. It's very interesting. Uh, so I feel like you could do some really tight hairpin turns on this bike if you needed to. Uh, so we'll be doing more of that. I'll be riding this off-road a lot. So. Uh, and there's a lot of trails where you have those steep um, 180 degree hairpin turns. So it'll be interesting to see how this handles. It could also be that wheel size makes it easier to steer too. I'm you know, not, not sure what is actually causing that, but uh, it's very interesting. So uh, I think that's all I want to note for now on it. I need to give it some more time. I need to ride it some more. I need to kind of sort out any last little fit issues, saddle setback, um, definitely need to swap out the crank. The pedals, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I have, uh, I got the XTR pedals, they're super light and they're really nice. They're, the, they're not the trail pedals, they're the regular ones and uh, they're super light and they're very nice. I definitely recommend those if you're interested in SPD pedals. Yeah. Uh, really nice, really nice ride. I, I am very impressed. I can't wait to put, put a lot more miles on it and see how it does when you get up into the hundred, over a hundred miles and see how you feel or see how I feel and how the bike performs on those longer day rides. So is this the official weight Omar? Yeah, with the new, with the new crank set. This is with the compact double and with the other crank. One more time without the bottle maybe. Let's see what we got. It's a little more official. It's going to be 23.4. It is 20. Whoa, 22.14. I got to do it again because it wasn't balanced on the scale. Okay, okay got last time. Ready? Yeah, ready? Yeah. 
23, exactly. 23 pounds. Okay, so the official weight is 23 pounds. 23 pounds, that's with bottle cages, and those are not the lightest bottle cages. Those were just some stainless steel ones that I grabbed off the shelf real cheap. That's with pedals. It's random light. That is with pedals, saddle, that's with the leather saddle. 23 pounds. That's tires, pedals, ready to ride, water bottle cages, saddle, bar tape, brakes. Nothing missing here, folks. This is it. <laughs> fenders. The only thing we don't have are fenders, but uh, Omar said that those will only add 400 grams. I haven't gotten really a chance to ride it yet. Have you ridden it at all? I don't think so. I don't think you have. Do you want to lower the saddle a little bit? No, no, it's okay. Is it your size too? I mean, I got a little of the seat, but I bet I can ride this right now. How's it feel? Yeah, it feels really good. The, the front shifting's rubbing. It's, I don't know, kind of feel like when you're in the middle, it's okay. Yeah. I gotta tighten your headset down. <laughs> oh, it's loose? Yeah, I, I put it back together. I, had, I was gonna tighten down last. Oh, and it didn't even loosen. Yeah, because it's a kink. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, IRD makes a sub C front derailleur, subcompact front derailleur, and it's a little bit shorter. It's not as long, and it matches the radius of the 46 tooth ring. Okay. So that might be worth trying next. So this one just has very close tolerance, so it works, but it just means it has to be perfect, or else it'll rub a little bit. So would, yeah. Would the other yeah. one be a little more forgiving? I'd hope so. I not not having it with me usually the, the what you're looking for is a bigger gap between the inner and outer plate okay but that's still tricky because you don't you still don't want the derailleur to overshift and there's only so far the out so far the outer plate can go and not have there be an overshift so. so what you're saying is that this radius will match better the curve of this chain ring that's one aspect and then I, I think the other is see how this is positioned a little rearward from from that position I think just having that derailleur be right in oh, the right it brings spot it forward more yeah and it's called a what IRD sub C sub C yeah okay well let's order one but we'll I'll just go with this for now since okay. it's here cool. so um, yeah maybe I should do a quick little update um, so over the past few days, I was riding this with the other crank, which was the Albion Triple, and I wasn't able to get the Q factor where I wanted it, even with a very, very narrow bottom bracket. So Omar hooked me up with this Velo Orange, or Velo Orange. I, I, <laughs> I, every time I say it, I stop and have to ask myself how to say it. Anyway, I, I'm trying not to do that today. So this Velo Orange, Grand Crew comp, subcompact double crank set. This has a 4630. And uh, I decided to go for this because we're gonna get the Q factor down to what would be the same as it would be for a road, like a road double. So we're looking at like 145, 140 to 145 Q factor, which is about as narrow as you could ever get. Yeah. And Omar got it so, everything fit in here so well. This chain ring, just clears everything, clears the frame perfectly. It sets up the big chain ring so that you're more or less in the middle of the cassette. So he, so basically it'd be like if you had a one by, 
when you were setting up a one by where the, the one chain ring in the front is sort of centered on the cassette in the back. That's where it sits right now. So when we're in the low, the tiny little ring here, and I'm in the small, small ring here, I would be too cross-chained. I wouldn't actually ride it like that, which is fine because a 3011 is a weird combination anyway. So basically you spend most of your time in the 46. So that's yeah. how I'm gonna set it up. That's how I set it up, and that's how we're gonna give it a try uh, and see if it works. I'm a big fan of triples, as everyone knows, but I'm gonna give this a try because it's lighter weight. It's a sweet looking crank. It looks a lot like the original classic cranks of the era that these bikes are sort of modeled after. To me, it seems all very fitting. I don't know, Omar, you have any other opinions about it? Um, I'm just curious to see how you like it. I, th I think it works good. If you're riding a lot, I, I do think it's a sweet spot crank. Hope you like it. So, um, I'm gonna stop it there, uh, and I will be making more videos to come, which will be talking about this bike and some of the adventures it's gonna take me on. So stay tuned for all of that, and thanks for watching. I will be posting up some more videos very soon, and I will, s so I will see all of you guys in those next videos. Have a great week, and uh, we'll catch you later. Later. Hey.